Right, so um, seems like uh, 90% of you doesn't know about uh, precision recall and accuracy, so I will uh, explain that a bit in the beginning. Uh, and then seems like you are an uh, engineer. Uh, you guys most of them are engineers, so that would be nice as well. And 80% oh, of you already use solar and yeah, okay, so then uh, I will give more uh, information related to those, or we can defer uh, specific question related to solar and elastic in the Q&A. But uh, I guess we can start so we can save time and uh, we can have more time for the Q&A. Right, so Thank you very much. Uh, can you guys come from, you can actually see my screen share by just type yes in the, in the discussion, in the discussion chat. Great. Right, so I'm, I'm going to use my uh, extended screen. So I'm going to to face this way. Uh, this way is my laptop screen that have the poll and then the discussion chat. So please uh, bear with me if you ask question and I don't see it. I will look at it after I finish my presentation. So I'm going to just look at this way and then look at my presentations. Okay, just to make sure that you guys not wondering why I'm not looking at you guys. All right, so let's start. So it's already like five minutes uh, after the intended uh, starting time. So uh, welcome to DrupalCon uh, presentations. Uh, my presentation is about uh, measuring search uh, result quality. And I'm Aradino Rizal. Uh, uh, my Drupal handle is Neo Safir. And I'm currently working for Lund University as the system developer and also the uh, basically system developer, but I'm handling like architecting, DevOps, and other stuff. We do a lot of things with one role in Lund University. Right, so a little bit about me. Uh, if I, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Indonesian, I like to travel. Uh, and then, then I have around like 14 plus years in Drupal development, starting from Drupal version four. And for the last five, six to six years, I've also doing a solar development as well. Uh, that's in part because we are using a solar in our search engine as services uh, in Lund University. And I architected and developed the, the services. Uh, a little bit about the services is a micro services ecosystem. We have, we are using uh, four languages and one of the component or one of the uh, part of this ecosystem is Drupal. And I'm basically just recently graduated from uh, Uppsala University. Uh, it's a master's degree program I'm in, in, compu in computational linguistic or language technology. So it's kind of like half linguistic, no, one, one quarter linguistic, one quarter computer science, one quarter statistics, and one quarter mathematics. That's uh, a bit about me. And then, so my presentation structure will be uh, divided into four major uh, parts. Uh, the first one is why we need to measure. Uh, second one is the metrics. Uh, the third one is case studies. And the fourth one is the methodology. Uh, let's go to the why, uh, why we measure and evaluate the search results. It's, if not obvious, uh, we want to measure uh, the search result so we know the reliability of our search result. We know, we want to know how good is our search result, if it's actually useful for the user or not. And also we want to measure the improvement of a system update and update. Uh, sometimes we don't know whether uh, our improvement is actually helping the user or not, right? So with a way to measure and evaluate our search, we will know whether our system or our search is improved by like 2%, 3%, and 4%. And 
And then after that, we can decide whether we want to deploy the improvement to production or not. And that's also related to the top. Uh, if we know the metrics, if we know how to measure the improvement or not, not improve the improvement or the bad thing about our search, we can see, we can use that as a one of our decision to move forward, whether we want to, as I said, uh, whether we want to implement the uh, system or not in our production uh, system. So uh, we have three uh, standard measurement metrics. Uh, the first one is the precision recall curve. And second one is means average positions. And the third one is normalized discounted cumulative mean. So this is a pretty technical term, but I will get you along the way. Uh, uh, we'll, with the case studies, so hopefully it will be clear enough in the end. Right, so before that, uh, I asked in the poll that how many of you know the difference between precision recall and accuracy? Uh, like 80% uh, of you don't know about it, so I will just uh, give, give you brief explanation about it. So uh, precision or positive predictive power is actually measure uh, whether you can actually predict so for instance, in spam detection, in spam detection, a false positive means a non-spam non email has been in, identified as a spam, right? Uh, the calculation is based on uh, true positive divided by true positive plus uh, false positive, right? And so this is important for uh, spam detection uh, because if you, have important email and it's actually flagged as a spam, you may uh, lose some important uh, information from the email. And this is something that you don't want and you have to have like high precision uh, system. You, you are okay. High precision system are basically, uh, you are, if some uh, email it's actually spam, but it's not flagged as a spam. You are okay with it usually because what you want is you want everything that is important uh, not flagged as a spam. In search, uh, precision measure how many documents returned by the query are actually uh, relevant. Uh, recall, in other hands, uh, is uh, measure whether the system could predict all actual positive as actually positive. So uh, for instance, I'm using the impression testing. Uh, in our current COVID-19 situation, we hear a lot of about uh, testing. Uh, the example is if a sick patient, actually positive, uh, went through the test and then predicted as not sick or predicted negative, uh, we don't actually want that. Uh, because maybe the cost associated with the uh, false negative will be too high if the sickness is contagious. So in this case, we want system that ha has higher recall because we we are okay with uh, uh, prediction that is wrong. We we rather have someone tested as a positive and it turns out to be negative rather than someone is positive, but flag as a negative. In the search, uh, recall measure how many actual relevant documents we could get based on the query. Um, if you still have a question related to this, you can ask away in the Q&A uh, session or type it away, or there are a lot of uh, uh, information on the web as well. But I will go forward. And this is uh, some example. Uh, so let's say we have like five relevant contents and C, A, C, B, C, 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 D, C, E for a query one. And a result one is considered a low precision and low recall because we have only one uh, document uh, or, or one content uh, return, C, A, and the rest is not uh, relevant at all. Uh, result, result two is high precision and low recall because all of the uh, contents return are 
actually relevant, but it's not all relevant content that are written. We are missing three relevant contents. Uh, result three, low precision, high recall. We basically have everything, all of all of the five relevant contents are returned by the system, but it's also return other things that is that are not relevant. So it's considered as a high recall because it return everything that is relevant, but low precision because it's return something else as well. What we want is something that is, that are high precision and high recall because it's basically only return that the only return contents that are relevant and nothing else. All right. So let's go again uh, as a side note. Uh, there is an accuracy and F1 score if you probably have heard about it. And accuracy is not the same as precision. So if you look at the picture on the left, uh, is let's say we have a archery uh, competition or dart competition. So we can see that on the top left, we have high precision and low accuracy. Uh, and in the top right, we have high precision and high accuracy. So the difference between Precision and accuracy is that uh, precision is related to repeatability and then accuracy, how accurate it is around the center of the target. So we can see that uh, on the top left, we have low accuracy because it's far away from the center of the target, but it, it has high precision because it's always hitting those spots. Right. Uh, on the other hand, we have low precision and high accuracy on the bottom right because uh, the hit is around the center, but it's not always hitting the same spot. So it's low precision and high accuracy. So right. So hopefully it's understandable. And the F1 score is basically a mix a matrix between recall and positions. And it's essentially a matrix that uh, balance between the precision and recall, because we probably want to have the system that uh, focus more on the precision, or we want to system we want to have a system that focus more on the recall, or we want to balance between the precision and recall, so the the result is not imbalanced, right? So next. Uh, we are going to the evaluation uh, matrix, and the matrix is rank aware evaluation matrix. So, rank aware evaluation matrix means that it also considers the order of the return uh, item, in this case, uh, search results. Right, so, so, the first one is precision recall curve, uh, as we know about precision and recall already, hopefully. And Rank retrieval context. Uh, appropriate sets of retrieval are naturally given by the top K. So what it means is basically we check the precision and recall of the search result based on how many uh, documents are returned. So let's say uh, we want to have like the top 100 relevant documents return and we check kind of like uh, start from the beginning what is the precision and recall at top one so if there is only the first uh, only one relevant document what is the precision and recall and then you you go also what happened if we return 10 what happened if we return 20 and what happened if we return 30. in the case study i will uh, explain a bit more about how we can read uh, this. So, but essentially, is you only check the precision and recall on the top K of uh, the of documents return. Right, and the second matrix is the mean average precision, and this is basically uh, for binary uh, relevant classes. Mostly, uh, so you have a document and you basically check whether it's, uh, you basically say this 
uh, document is relevant or irrelevant. Uh, so basically what it does is uh, efforts offer information uh, and using precision value to obtain the set of top K documents. So top K documents like uh, top 10, top 20, or top 30 of, of the relevant uh, uh, contents or documents that are written by the search engine. Right, so this is map and this is the calculations. Uh, you don't need to know about the formula, but I just put it for the sake of completeness. And the drawback is that map is not suitable for gradient relevancy. It means that if you have like uh, one document and then you want to annotate or tag it as highly relevant or relevant or somewhat relevant, irrelevant, then it's not suitable. There is another uh, matrix that is more suitable for that. Map is for binary relevant classes, relevant or not relevant. Right, so this is an example of map. Uh, so let's see the picture on the left. Uh, on top of the picture, on top of the uh, uh, the first, the top part of the picture on the left is actually uh, search will search result. So we will see that the green is relevant, uh, the red box is not relevant. So we, we see that uh, the, first, the first top one, you have uh, one to one. So one uh, document or content is returned is actually relevant. If you, we look at the top five, then we can see three of those top five are relevant, uh, but that's oh, right. Yes, one, two, three, four. Yeah, three of those documents are relevant, but the sec the two documents are not relevant. In this case, uh, it's the same as the one below. The top five, we also have three relevant documents. <coughs> Sorry. And we also have two relevant documents, but um, the AP or the map is higher on the lower picture. This is because on the, the top, the upper pictures, uh, the irrelevant documents is in the second and the third place. So AP or AP or map or average expression can calculate that for you. You want to have a system that can have all of the relevant documents on top rather than in the in the, on the bottom of the source page, right? Right, so the next matrix is normalized discounted cumulative gain. Uh, so it's a bit mouthful, but what it does is actually, uh, we, want con we want to consider that uh, highly relevant documents should come on top of the relevant documents and those should come on top so to understand this, we need to understand the cumulative gain and discounted cumulative gain. And this explanation is basically derived from the, this blog post. Uh, you can search as well. So what it does is, uh, so every document has relevant score. Uh, the left, uh, kind of like JSON result, uh, is taken from the solar uh, relevance uh, calculations. So if you have solar, for uh, you can do uh, you, you can use the debug mode to actually ask for how do you actually calculate this uh, item to be like on the third position, for instance. So solar will give you the re relevance score, and then we. The cumulative gain term is basically the sum of all of the relevant score in the recommendation set. The recommendation set is the search result. So we just sum every uh, relevance uh, score in those search page, right? And the discounted cumulative gain is basically 
because the cumulative game does not consider the order of relevancy. It means that uh, if you mix the, if you mix those two, let's say we have like ten source result, regardless of the order of the source result, uh, the score will be the same. The discounted cumulative game uh, taken consideration of the order as well. So this is the calculation. I'm not going to explain, to, uh, but you can read it afterward. Uh, what it, the point is that if the relevant document is actually on the bottom of the list, it will score less than if uh, another system gives you a set of set result where the relevant documents are actually placed on top of the rest. And then the normalized uh, discounted cumulative gain is actually just to make sure that uh, we have uh, upper bound and lower bound. So we so we don't have like, uh, no, uh, sparse uh, score. Uh, because especially if you have like personalized search, uh, you probably have like multiple upper boundaries and uh, lower boundaries. So the normalized discounted cumulative gain uh, term, the value is basically just comparing what is the ideal order for you as a personalized uh, search and compare it with the one that given by your search engine system. And then the score, if it's matched perfectly, it's supposed to be one uh, or 100%. In this example is 0.93. So it's almost uh, matched perfectly. And from here you can try to improve or you say that, oh, this is good enough. So we don't have to do anything else, right? right so, uh, those uh, metrics are actually only for one query. So if you want to uh, test or evaluate the whole system, you have to average the score for all queries. And if you have like personalized search, like search only for a specific user or a specific user group, then you average for those specific users. Right. And uh, we have a case study a one query evaluation. Uh, in this example use case and um, to query evaluations, we have a problem to tackle here. Like, should we do query pre-processing or is our query expansion good? So the first example of query pre-processing is a user type a query to our search box in our search engine. And the query is computer science application. Let's say the user want to apply for computer science program and university. And then uh, the pre-process query will be computer science uh, course program admission 2020. Because we know that uh, we, we as the engineer want to know that the, the return should supposed to be only from the 2020. And then we know that uh, computer science may be related to course program. So we insert the course program keyword and then application is synonym to the admission, but we know based on the test that admission will give the user better results. So we replace the application word to admission, right? And another example, an example for query expansions, this is from PubMed. Uh, user type a uh, skin itch, and then PubMed will basically expand those uh, user query into something that is good or better represented, represented as a query for PubMed search engine. And of course, this is only for PubMed, you can do something else if you have different system. Right. So we have tells, we have those uh, problem. And we have this example task for search evaluations. Uh, the task is, let's say we have like a lot of uh, documents and then this is the, the task. 
we want to check whether we can actually uh, get uh, relevant documents for G7 summit in Halifax. Right? So this description of the task is find documents about discussion on the reform of financial institution, and in the particular, the World Bank and the FM and so on and so forth. Right? And then we have the narration that the relevant documents must give details of economic discussion and so on and so forth. Right? So we have this task and we basically go to our uh, search engine system and we try to type something, right? And then when we type like uh, query one, summit Halifax, uh, and our query transformation basically uh, transform that into combined summit Halifax, and that will return all of the documents that contain summit and Halifax since both of the terms are weighed equally. And the result is as follows. So this is a precision rec recall graph or curve that I, I explained before. And this is has a map. So what? how do we read this uh, curve? So up to up to 30% uh, of the uh, up to 30% of all of the relevant documents, the system give us the correct relevant documents 100%. But then after the rest degrade up to six uh, or 60%. So then we can decide whether should we improve it or should we not because the best solution is regardless uh, on how many uh, documents uh, return, you want to have like 100% position, something like that. So if the query is include financial uh, in the query, uh, you will get 100%. Oh, uh, by the way, this is a sample that I have, so it may be different from you, so you have to kind of like test it. and. So in this case, we know that uh, Summit Halifax Financial will give you 100% precision in any given uh, situation in related to how many documents return. But then maybe from the log, we see that user only uh, type Summit Halifax without the financial. So maybe the decision, the next decision will be just add financial if there is a Summit Halifax in our user query, that could be it. Uh, that's one uh, study case uh, for query, query evaluation. You can do that. Um, yeah, this is this. Uh, this slide is only comparison between if you have the summit first versus when you add financial in the end of the user query. And case study number two: uh, stop word and com compound word. Uh, so basically, uh, common words or, or stop words are actually asked to add PC and something like that. There is a lot of lists of these stop words. And compound word in English, there's a bookstore, and farm, black hole. In German, there's a Wohnung, Reinigung, uh, house cleaning, uh, or Kraftwerk, a power plant. In Swedish, there is a music juridic, music law, or cost for rendering, dietary chains. So some of the uh, compound words has new meaning, but also it's actually two different uh, meaning combined into one. It's just like depending on the language, you don't split it into two words, but you combine it. Especially for German Germanic uh, language, you have a lot of compound words there. So uh, we want to see whether should we use stop word or should we decom decompound this compound word, right? So let's say we have this background task. So we have this uh, Swedish medical data and uh, the task is to find information related to LDL and SDL. So, and uh, here we have the same thing as before. We have the title and description and what relevant document could be kept. But, uh, so you're basically saying that uh, the relevant document should uh, involve about how diarrhea chains affect the LDL and SDL level in our blood concentration. Right? Uh, and then uh, the question is that, as I said, uh, 
stop word is okay, the component is okay or not, right? And the result is that with stop word removed from the query, so if we remove all of the stop word, we get better results. Uh, we can see that is 1% better result. And if we decompound the compound word, it's actually give you worse result. How much worse is 2% worse. And this is understandable because uh, in medical information, if your audience is actually have domain expertise, they will write the, the whole compound word. But if your audience is not domain expertise, they probably want to split it into something like uh, you have this cost for entering. So uh, they probably just write the for entering or maybe cost in another or something like that. And also from us, do we want to return all of the document that only contain cost for entering or dietary change? Or we also want to give the end user documents that has cost in one part and then for entering in another part. So this is a discussion that you, that you need to have. And uh, yes, so when we have this one, we can basically uh, discuss whether we want to use it in, we want to use top words or we want to the common common words in our system. Uh, because if it, if it, if an is actually uh, improved, if the improvement is only 1%, then maybe it's not worth it to put it into a subject. So the metallic is quite, uh, so forward, so you create the gold standard uh, using survey or based on user behavior on the side, and you pick one of the metrics based on the data, and then you evaluate. Uh, automatic evaluation is recommended, and then after you evaluate uh, the result, you improve your system. So you can do manual improvement, which is like uh, setting up the weights on or setting up the boost on solar, for instance or you can use automatic improvement like learning to rank uh, country photo in solar. And elastic elastic source also have the LTR as well, uh, learning to rank uh, module as well. But so for the survey and the best user behavior on site, uh, so for the survey, you create a target group or persona, and then you create a search topic and ask our target group the topic they are searching for. Uh, and then you create a survey based on the topic with our target groups. And then you create the table of survey result. So the table is like this. You have the topic number, the query ID, and then the relevant or not record. So you want to see, you want to compare between the, what you, the user want and what your system actually give. So you can see the description. This is the idea of why you need to do a survey. And you do it for each persona or each study group because you probably want to personalize the survey result depending on their profile. And the caveat is that it may be expensive, it may be inconsistent between end user. And over time, one document may not relevant some, from, some, uh, for some period of time or become less relevant with new documents. But, and since we have only have sample, maybe it's not representative. But and then with the user clicks, you can do it but because we potentially can get a lot of data. Uh, we have assumed, but then we have to assume that the user know best and we trust the user that we know they are looking for. Uh, so how to do it? We just basically create persona, associate query with user clicks. I also include the order and analyze and clean the clip data because it could be noisy. Uh, this is the, the caveat as well. The data can be noisy and it's not easy to interpret the user behavior based on click. And if we have a spammy uh, search that can be problematic. And also in the GDPR era, you have to be careful not to break privacy policy when you collecting the data. So uh, yeah, so other than that, uh, user may not be domain expertise to decide which document is relevant and only clicks the top result, that could be it. Right, so that's it, I think. Uh, do we have time to actually do Q&A? Yeah, I think so, we have six minutes.
basically. So uh, do you have uh, like uh, uh, questions? Uh, I don't see any questions in the live and Q and A. So, yeah, if you don't have any questions, uh, I just go to ask you if you have. Oh, sorry, uh, there's a questions. Do you have any tools to recommend for automatically make search result better? Yes, uh, there is one that is created by, I think Drop Solid create one. Uh, uh, it's based on learning to rank in solar. And I don't remember the model, but uh, if you search learning to rank uh, Apache solar, uh, then then you can get the model in Drupal. And I think uh, Nick Van Hoff had this uh, presentation as well from the last DrupalCon as well. So you can check it out. Uh, so it's quite uh, nice to have it. Cool. How do you relate your experimentation with Drupal? So basically, uh, in our case, the Drupal part is indexing the all of, we, we index all of the Drupal content to solar in our case, right? And then uh, from there, we don't actually touch Drupal anymore. We basically fiddle, fiddle around with the uh, solar search result. And, then uh, we basically create our. Then we basically have to create our own system to actually calculate the or measure the search result. But this search API LTR, thank you, Florent, for giving us the link. Search API LTR will also do that for you automatically. So uh, unfortunately, my uh, slide not based on Drupal because I want to give like a broad overview and maybe not Drupal centric because maybe you guys have uh, another system that is probably, you know, uh, better or already in place. So uh, you can get some uh, integration going on after the sessions uh, without actually having to, oh, uh, this is Drupal related. So I cannot do it if I don't have Drupal. Yes, you can, it's just uh, overview, you can build your own uh, let's say Python uh, app, or you can even do a symphony. But the idea is you, you pick one of the uh, metrics, uh, and then after that, you create a survey uh, of your user, and then you, or you user click, and then you compare between uh, what you get and what the uh, user want. That's basically the, the main idea. What's uh, another question here? What's your take on manual biasing on the search result? Is this a gift or a danger? I'm not quite sure what you mean with manual biasing. Uh, I know, but bias, uh, bias, bias, a that I understand is related to our data. Uh, but I'm not sure about uh, manual basing of the sub result. But, so maybe you can clarify a bit. Uh, let's see if uh, someone puts it in the... Uh, uh, let's see, I don't, I'm not sure actually what's the uh, manual basing. But bias is can be, again, uh, that's, uh, bias can be a danger, can be a gift, depending on how you use it, I guess. Like for instance, if your uh, audience is actually medical professional, you want to have the medical professional bias on your search result, right? Uh, you, because maybe if you want to 
if you remove the bias, the 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 intended result may not be the one that the, your user, which is this in this case medical professional, want. Yes, uh, influence the order of which results are returned. Oh, you mean like uh, search engine optimization, something like that, right? Right, right. So, uh, uh, again, uh, as I said before, it depends. It can be a gift or it can be a danger, depending on what your intended outcome is supposed to be, right? Uh, uh, if I'm Google, I don't want uh, bias in my result. But if I'm, uh, let's say, let's say hospital, and then we want to cater mostly only for medical professional that is searching in our system, maybe we want uh, the bias to be there. So we want to actually manually uh, influence the order. Like for instance, in our uh, case in Duke University, we have this uh, best bets, uh, let's say. So best bet is exactly if you search, basically what it does is that if you search a certain query, you will get X result. And it's always that because we tell that you need to get that, basically that. So uh, yeah, so basically something like that. Uh, and another 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 example is that uh, we want to uh, show the link to our box app if someone searching for box app. So yeah, so we basically finally have uh, inter inter uh, interference on the search relevancy. So if someone searches about uh, if the string query is box apps, you basically just give uh, the link of the box app as uh, our first uh, result. So basically that. So, uh, okay, thank you very much for uh, having the uh, time to listen to my presentations. And don't forget to join us for the contribution and opportunities on Friday. And if you have time, uh, if you think this uh, presentation useful, please take a time to complete the survey uh, at the end of this session. Thank you very much for your time and my pleasure to share uh, what uh, I uh, experimented uh, in the past here in Drupal. Thank you very much again, bye.